A quick review then of really what happened yesterday and then we can be a bit more forward looking for the rest of the session uh, for today. And looking at the charts this morning, you can still see that the, uh, the pound has come off about 60 pips, albeit it's held on to a fairly significant portion of that move from yesterday, but we'll look at that in more detail uh, shortly. Some of the movement coming with both pairs seen in negative territory, euro dollar and cable, with the dollar up about a quarter percent. Now, the dollar index has backed off its initial uh, late Asian overnight high, but again, still up a quarter percent. Uh, this comes, of course, in the context of a well over 1% sell off in the dollar yesterday. Uh, but elsewhere, we had a bit of a gap up in the DAX future, but very little. Uh, real fundamental news flow to um, take that move any higher and through the cash open then it looked to close the gap which it has done to the tick uh, on that candle you can see in my middle left chart and it's pretty much at that level at this point in time. Uh, elsewhere crude slight positive uh, up around 30 cents uh, not too much going on there no real major headlines from overnight just edging uh, presumably just above pivot here more recently and does come ahead of the API numbers we'll get uh, well the API numbers we can review tomorrow um, and then we'll get the DOEs as well later into the week but really I guess we've got to start with the pound and really some of the press and I want to quickly go over and explain some of yesterday's moves um, I know some of you as well weren't here, so to recap exactly what happened. And the first thing that I, that I obviously I get the tube in in the morning, and, and this is what I saw. Can you make that out? Okay, so don't call me maybe. Steely PM plays hardball with the EU. Europe will be tiny pieces if it punishes us. MPs get a vote but deal or no deal we're out and the last one I like the best the pound soars on the strength of the speech now this is when there's a big distinct difference between journalists and market people journalists sometimes uh, don't have a clue but also as well they have a they have a distinct reason for why they write such sensationalist headlines because Joe Public can't get enough of it. That's what sells newspapers. And the more they can kind of spin that, then the better it is, the more papers that they sell. Now, if her speech was so great, why then are we not continuing to soar higher in the British pound? Well, that's because the financial markets have already moved on. And I'm going to go into a bit of my, my thinking, and I must say this is my own opinion. You don't have to agree or disagree with me, but I, I think that this event has had absolutely no difference from her speech from where we were prior to a week or two weeks ago. I still think ultimately the pound will weaken. So to back up my reasoning here and to go through why I have that view is, first of all, let's look at this cable chart. And let's identify when it is exactly she started speaking. 11.45. So roughly, it was around this point here. Now, if you actually look at where we were at the opening of trade on yesterday's session, it, we opened there, 120.41. So not too low from that test we had at 120 on the morning before on the reaction of course to that weekend press coverage about leaving the single market. So between there and the point in which we, she started speaking, we had already rallied more than half of the move that caused the biggest one day intraday move uh, in eight years in the British pound. So for me, saying that actually her speech was the reason for this entire move is factually incorrect. Now, as you know, yesterday, uh, you had the Donald Trump comments talking down the dollar and the dollar saw a very substantial move to the downside, well over 1% in the dollar index, which is uh, a fairly irregular occurrence, I would say. Now, talking about Trump, I um, had a question from Mohammed this morning in the chat, so just to address that, uh, talking about 
um, does really Trump's comments have the impact to move the market? Well, historically, I would say over the course of the last uh, decade, politicians really would have very minimal impact on the financial markets. Uh, it would be central bankers who would be the, the governing policy, which would then uh, indirectly then move the, the local currency, whatever that might be. The only difference is, is that the world's a very different place in 2017, given the um, events that unfolded during 2016, namely the populist movement, so Brexit uh, and Trump, of course. And what's happening now is you're getting a bit of a distinct shift going into 2017, given the focus on Brexit, Dutch elections, French elections, federal elections in Germany, is that politicians actually uh, are carrying more clout for potentially moving the market that they've ever done because financial markets, as we said before, are now driven by politics and not economics. I think what's happened here, though, is that Donald Trump, being Donald Trump, obviously didn't get the memo about how important and this shift now that the financial markets have made and that he made a very explicit comment about the dollar being too strong and the US losing its competitiveness, particularly against China. Now, that is um, particularly important that I'm sure he will continue to learn from this process. Uh, but it's very uncommon to have a politician, I think, speak so directly on a currency. A central banker who's very well schooled in the communication with the markets very rarely, if ever, will make a direct comment. They will say quite explicitly, actually, that their policy is not defined to move the actual or target a currency level, something you'd hear from the ECB on quite a regular basis. Uh, so the fact that Trump said that and the fact that if you look at all of the macro factors that are going on at the moment, the way the market has been moving more broadly, Trump is the driving force of the financial markets. And so him saying that had an immediate effect. And so it wasn't only cable, euro dollar was on the front foot yesterday, but that caused a large portion of that rally. Also, to throw into this, if you look around, uh, let me just highlight this point was of course when we had the UK inflation readings. Uh, that's when you had the print come in higher than expected. In fact, the highest inflation now that we've seen in Britain since 2014. Uh, a little bit of front running occurred, if you remember, ahead of the figures. We had the initial kind of buy the rumor, sell the fact. It snapped to 122 before pulling back. Uh, potential classic on that S1, uh, but you would have been, I guess, quite, been very forceful or aggressive on taking that on, I'd say, again, or heading into what was arguably the bigger event, which was Theresa May. Then going into Theresa May's speech, obviously we'd already recovered the complete gap lower that occurred from the reopening electronic trade on Friday night, the sterling futures I'm looking at here. So by the time she was speaking, we'd already fully reversed that and some. And then she spoke and if you remember the briefing yesterday, I was talking about my feelings about how overtly negative the press was yesterday morning and how I felt that actually the probability was that actually Sterling might rally rather than fall when she speaks, which is exactly what occurred yesterday. This being that it's not the speech itself. That was the final. I was explaining this to, to Bill yesterday, who's one of the, the live traders was that actually the actual speech May delivered was the final real piece of a, of a strategy that lasted maybe two days from the, from the government, or actually longer. Because if you think about it, if you go all the way back to Thursday of last week, so that's this point here. Does anyone remember what happened here? This was at three o'clock or just after three o'clock last Thursday. That's cable and we sold off pretty much that evening over a full point. For me, that's when Theresa May and the government, that's when their strategy and their plan to deliver what was delivered yesterday came into fruition. That was the point of which a headline snapped and it said that Theresa May next Tuesday will be giving a 
hard or a Brexit speech to outline the details with more clarity. At that point, the pound came under immediate selling pressure. Then, obviously, you had the big gap lower. That was that report about leaving the single market. Gap lower, and then we sold off in Asia at the open in Europe before we bounced. Then, the day before the speech, the Telegraph and other national papers leaks a report saying that these are the 12 main points of our Brexit directly from the speech from Theresa May. So this is where the discussion took place yesterday morning. And if you think about it, what else could May have ever said in order to push the pound lower? We've already heard, for me, the Treasury had done a fantastic job and number 10 at basically talking the market down and desensitizing it to actually when she delivered her, delivered her speech it totally was not a surprise for the market nothing that was said yesterday was new you if you read the papers from the night before when her 12 points were leaked nothing she said yesterday apart from one key point which caused actually one of the biggest upticks during her speech about the fact that both houses will get a vote on the final Brexit plan. That was the only real new thing. Everything else was old. That then layered in with the dollar weakness, with the inflation uptick. And I'm not going to argue, I thought Theresa May did an absolutely excellent job at, in terms of the tone fluency of the delivery. I thought she was a little shaky on the Q&A, but she did exactly the right thing, kept it very brief, only took three or four questions and then cut it off. And actually then we completely rallied, we broke some technical levels upside, managed to, in the end, surmount the 124 handle actually late into US trade before we paired back slightly. What I'm saying then is that this for me is not all on just what she said. This is when, like an ECB member, if you remember a couple of months ago, there was a Bloomberg source story talking about the idea of tapering. Now this was way before tapering was ever mentioned. This came probably three months or so before they actually did do, let's say, a soft taper in December by trimming the monthly purchases from 80 to 60 billion. But this is what skillful central bankers do is they leak to the market subtle hints in order that us as human traders in this behavioral market that we trade, we don't get so spooked. And I think this is exactly what the UK government's done. They've purposefully leaked into the market information in order to desensitize it into what ultimately was a fairly hard line uh, Brexit speech from Theresa May. And the market actually took it as a positive as well as those other factors that are in play. So, taking a look at some of the headlines this morning and going through those, obviously everyone's talking about this, this speech. Uh, FT running the headline, May warns that the UK will walk away from bad deal. Now, this bit is the interesting bit for me. The Prime Minister said she would seek a bold, ambitious free trade agreement with the EU and hope to maintain partial membership of the EU Customs Union, continue tariff-free trade and an implementation phase to avoid Brexit cliff edge. Wow, that, that's like me saying, I want to be a billionaire, I want to go out with a supermodel and I'd like to take her for a drive and a spin in my Lamborghini Diablo. Uh, but I'll settle for a Ford Fiesta and that will be fine. This for me is, the, the market obviously liked the way it was delivered yesterday. I'm not, I'm not um, denying that. But all this is to me is exactly where we were. This is the UK stance and Europe will fire back with completely opposite. We haven't moved anywhere in my opinion. Everything that Theresa May was pledging yesterday for me is about maintaining a hold of the political, um, well, the vote for Brexit by Middle England was the fact that we wanted to have it. She is facilitating that political view. Um, these pledges and commitments that she's saying is all well and good saying it, 
but there is no way that Europe are going to concede and give us all of these measures. But this is negotiation at its most furthest, which is very typical at this point. How has Europe responded? Well, this is, how you, this is the front cover of the main newspaper in Germany this morning. And remember, Merkel's probably not going to come out and, and say something so explicit because she's a better politician than that. But this is basically Germany's main business publication, Little Britain. Now, let's move this down. Well, I mean, if you're looking in France, they care more about Kim Yi. Uh, Le Figaro, the Irish Independent, La Republica, you go through all of the European press from Italy, Spain, you name it, every single European paper is following a similar theme. All that they're saying is that you must be joking, Theresa May, if you think that you're going to get all of those conditions. And this is exactly where we are, and this is exactly where we were, no different. So my thinking here is I wonder, I just wonder how long it is before um, people get over what was actually the biggest one day rise intraday in sterling in eight years. How quickly do they get over that and actually you resume normal business, which generally speaking is a lower cable rate, weakening uh, currency. One of the big plays yesterday, obviously, was with sterling strength. What does that mean for the FTSE 100? Well, the FTSE 100 got hammered yesterday, and it's under pressure again today. Now, you can see here the FTSE has been on an absolute tear, really, since uh, the end of last year and also through January because of weakness in the British pound. The fact that we printed multi-decade lows only a few days ago in sterling meant that the FTSE was trading record highs. But obviously with that big move yesterday, the FTSE's come under pressure. And for any of those looking at the FTSE CFD this morning and the futures under pressure, uh, potential short there at pivot in the CFD FTSE, which is UK 100. Because not only is, you know, maybe a bit of still f f uh, feed through from yesterday's move but there's a couple of companies this morning namely Pearson the education uh, group in the FTSE 100 they're down 24 percent on a profit warning uh, MITI in the FTSE 250 down 16 percent profit warning third profit warning in four months Premier Foods FTSE 100 shares down 16%. Profit warning that their full year profits will be down 10% lower than previously forecast. And I thought, I thought Brexit wasn't having an impact. I thought that's what they were telling us. Well, you'd be a little bit miffed if you were looking at some of these FTSE earnings that are coming out for sure. So certainly then my feelings are that where we are in the pound and this big move higher that we had yesterday I think this is short-lived. I don't think this is the beginning of a resurgent pound that's going to continue to move higher. If you look where we are at the moment, technically, we're just starting to have a look at breaking that asia pack support uh, that was in play uh, and just edging a little lower. We're down around 77 cents. It wouldn't be surprising to see a move back to pivot as the morning draws out, I think, uh, and certainly that 123 handle. The other thing as well is that I think dollar or oh, that dollar move that we had yesterday, I don't think you're going to get a reoccurrence of that. I think that those stateside politicians will be a little bit more tight lipped now from what they've, uh, the impact that they had by making such an off the cuff comment, which I think was more of a, a Trump fluff than anything. One of the other interesting things, obviously, with the dollar was you've got the World Economic Forum ongoing in Davos. And you had the Chinese president, Yi Jinping, speaking, making a debut at the annual conference. And let me just read to you some of the comments here that the Chinese president said. Said that countries should view their own interest in the broader context and refrain from pursuing their own interests. He also said he will also warn that no one will emerge as a winner from a trade war. 
and referred to the Paris Agreement as being a hard-won achievement. Who does this sound the complete opposite to? It's almost like the world is going through a complete political transition where China's becoming ever more pushing for an open, more liberalized economy, um, capitalism, whereas the US is becoming a more protectionist society, make America great again. You've almost had China and the US flip completely on their head. Um, and I just thought that was really interesting yesterday to see how that is really breaking down now uh, from that angle because that, that certainly is the bigger long-term play uh, if China continues to pursue that. And also in terms of trade agreements between Trump's administration when he comes in and his discussions with the Far East and predominantly China, you know, they, they couldn't be more different in their views at this point in time. So that's going to be very interesting to monitor. Okay, so let's just have a look. Yeah, as Ben's just set, said in the chat room there, uh, witness the regression of Western progression. Nice line. I think I couldn't agree more. Um, so let's just take a look at the, the calendar for today. And we do have a couple of UK numbers coming up at 9.30 to be aware of. You've got the claimant count change and the unemployment rate with the average earnings numbers now. Out of all of these, I'd say something to keep a very close eye on going forward is going to be the average earnings. Because ultimately, if inflation keeps rising, I actually saw there was an article here in the paper this morning that I read. And I know it's a very small ticket item, but did anyone read about Apple's um, apps? They're putting the price of apps on the app store in Britain Priced in ster or price in sterling, they're putting them up 25%. I think as of today. So it might sound small, but when you're talking about billions of apps getting bought and downloaded, uh, a 25% increase. You know, we were looking at soft or white goods uh, going up 10%. Apple were putting up their benchmark products like iPads and iPods and laptops up 10%. Um, but we're now looking at 25% in some cases. And this, if inflation starts to run away in the UK, as was hinting towards, because it was higher than expectations and multi-years high in yesterday's UK inflation reading, then as people's earnings definitely start to lag the rise in inflation, this is gonna impact then their purchasing power, their ability to spend, their consumer confidence, you know, then the snowball happens and then this is what then explains the reasoning why the economic conditions in the UK will gradually deteriorate which is then overlaying the uncertainty around the triggering of Article 50 and the negotiation of the Brexit process. That's then what would lead to the overwhelming both domestic and political uncertainties that will ultimately weigh on the pound which of course will come in the context of generally a fairly stable dollar. Because let's forget Trump for a second. The US economy is sharply outperforming on the global stage and the Federal Reserve is leap years ahead of other central banks in that they're committing to three rate hikes, whereas most global central banks are nowhere near that. And that would mean that even though we might get a bit of a pullback on a lack of full implementation of fiscal policies from Trump, actually the underlying US economy will keep the dollar fairly stable in comparison to other other generally weaker currencies. Looking elsewhere, you've got the European CPI. Actually, looking at that being uh, unchanged to that 1.1% on the year on year, but uh, European inflation likewise has been the same on the uptick. Then going to the US afternoon, and actually the inflation readings could provide a little bit of intraday noise. Uh, we saw that play out with the um, core PPI numbers last week overshadowed the US retail sales figure because they were higher than expected and so the CPI numbers will be closely watched in the US. Uh, just looking on a month-on-month -month basis, it's been ticking along on a fairly uh, consistent pattern on a month-to-month -month comparison. We'll also get the industrial production number which actually was one of the weakest spots last time that number came out. Um, 
actually was worse than expected and the biggest decline since March uh, that we saw last time for the US IP figure. So keep an eye on that also. Uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decision, not expecting any change with the rates, but any of the live guys in FX uh, trading CA6, then definitely that always, as you know, provides a high degree of volatility for the CAD. That's more to do with Polos, the governor, speaking with a post-rate decision press conference where they'll outline their outlook for the Canadian economy and their rate trajectories and so on. Uh, you do have Feds Yellen speaking today. Uh, the topic here is goals of monetary policy and how to pursue them. So we probably would have already closed up shop. This is well after the European close and towards the latter stages of US trading hours. Uh, but if anyone is staying in the marketplace, then probably worth just keeping an eye on the dollar. So that's the calendar for today. And just as I'm speaking, lo and behold, sterling coming off now. So as I was kind of uh, intonating towards, I think this is a little bit punchy where we have traded yesterday. And so again, it makes sense to me that we should be moving a little lower here because uh, the dollar likely to stage a bit of a comeback from yesterday's significant losses as the markets got over that Trump comment. Uh, and we start to I think once people start to digest what we've heard from Theresa May and actually I think people will come to the agreement that this really doesn't move the, the goalposts that significantly. Uh, certainly Europe's response um, has been fairly critical thus far. Uh, actually one thing just to round things off, I did hear, yeah da David Davis said that earlier this morning we received some positive responses from Brussels overnight on May's Brexit plans well uh, I'm not sure David Davis has read in any of the European newspapers this morning anyhow finish on that note enjoy your trading day and I'll see you in the chat room thank you